There are two amazing things about these student cards from Capital One. First, they allow you to build your credit. You don't have to have a decent credit rating when you're getting this. It's not, it doesn't have to be excellent, it doesn't have to be great or good, just a fair credit rating and potentially no credit rating because you're a student, 18 and in college. Now, if you're not, you can't get this card. The second thing, which I'll touch on later, is the deal they have until November of 2024 and what they'll give you in relation to Uber. Watch to the end, I'll explain it in detail. I spent over $1 million on credit cards in just one year. Let my experience help you get out of debt and use credit cards to your advantage. Now let's get into this video. Here's a great way to build your credit if you're a student. It's not the easiest thing to do because oftentimes you'll find that you can't get particular credit cards because you don't have a certain credit rating. How do you have a high credit rating if you don't have any credit yet? So two Capital One cards are specifically for students. In other words, you don't have to have excellent credit. You don't have to have great or good credit. I believe you just have to have fair credit, which chances are you will have as a student. Now, what does it mean to be a student? Well, in this case, it has to be a college. So you have to be 18 years and older. You have to either be currently enrolled in college or you've been accepted and you will be starting within three months. So that means that three months before that semester starts, you can apply for their cards. They have two different cards. Why they have completely different names, I have no idea. But we'll talk about how to build credit in a moment and not just build your credit, but by building, I mean have a good credit score. So the first card they call their Saver One Rewards for Students. They have a Saver One Rewards card. I have a video on the various cards that they have. If you're a non-student, those would be preferable because you can't get this one unless you're a student. The second card that they have is the Quicksilver Rewards for Students. Two completely different names, not sure why, but they are very different in what they give you. First and foremost, let's talk about building credit. So to do that, you're going to need to use the credit cards. I do not recommend that you keep a balance. In other words, if you're a student and this is all new to you, you use your credit card at the end of a month or the statement cycle will be approximately 30 days. It could be June 15th to July 15th or June 15th to July 14th, or it could just be the month of June. But when you use your card, you buy something for $100, you won't pay any interest. If when it comes due, you pay it off. So only use it for things that you have the money to pay off. So if you're currently buying groceries and paying for them in cash or with your debit card, you can now switch to a credit card, pay for those groceries. And at the end of the cycle, you can ace, you can just log in, put in your banking and routing number, and you can just send over the money to pay off the credit card, or you can send them a check and you can pay it off that way. But the point is don't run a balance because then you're going to have to pay interest. So the first thing is for your benefit, don't keep a balance, don't pay interest. That will help you build your credit. The second thing is they like they being the credit bureaus when they uh, give you a credit rating. One of the things they look at is, do you have credit cards? Okay, great. What are What were you approved for? In other words, what's the max amount that you can spend on a particular card. So let's say you get one of these Capital One cards and they say your spending cap is $1,000. They won't let you spend more than $1,000. Well, the credit agencies like to see that you keep it under 30%, 30% usage. So if you have a balance on that card, you're gonna want it to be $300 or less to keep your credit ratings good. Now, that doesn't mean you're carrying a balance necessarily. The credit agencies and the credit card companies, the banks, will report to the agencies sometimes quite often. So even though you're not carrying a balance from month to month and you're paying it off, they will still report your balance as you have it potentially. So during the month, if you have a $900 balance and you have a $1,000 card, even though you're going to pay it off, that's considered 90%. $900 of 1,000 is 90%. So they'll say your credit utilization rate or how much of the credit you use is 90%. Now they like to see 30% or under in order to give you a really good credit rating. So you want your balance to always be around $300 on that $1,000 card. Thanks for watching. Take a moment to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos and hit that like button as well. It really helps the channel out and helps the video spread to more people. Thanks for watching. Now something that uh, didn't happen in the past, in the past everything happened a lot slower. 
When did a bank report over to the credit agency? When did the credit agency update things? Now it happens a lot faster, meaning if you don't need to obtain something by using your credit, like a mortgage or a car loan or another card or whatever it may be, if no one's looking at your credit, then it's okay that you have an 80% utilization rate or 90% utilization rate as long as you're paying it off because the next month when you pay it down, it will go and report that fairly quickly. So you can literally change your credit score usually within a month or sooner. Meaning if you know that you're about to go in and let's say apply for a car loan, make sure all your credit card balances are below 30% or even less. That way it'll report over and you'll have a better rating. So this card helps you and why would you get it? Because it may be one of the only cards you can get. If not a Capital One student card, you might wanna go and get a student card from someone else because they have different qualifications on how you get it. They'll probably give you a low total balance. So you might wanna get one from them, one from someone else, see which one you like better. The benefits, however, are completely different. The Saver One Rewards card has multiple categories where you can earn money back. They give you 3% cash back for dining, entertainment, streaming, and they give you 1% cash back on all other categories. So that means when you're going out and getting your groceries or you're eating in some entertainment places, you're gonna get 3% of what you spent back in cash for your statement credit or otherwise. 1% back on everything else you spent. That's not bad. Some cards will give you 2% back, but you might have difficulty as a student obtaining those cards. So 1% or more in all categories is a decent amount of cash back. They also have Capital One Entertainment, and Capital One Travel. and Capital One Entertainment, you get 8% back when you buy tickets to different shows and that sort of thing through them. And I believe the travel is 5% back. Also, the unique feature that I referenced is Uber. Until November 14th of 2024, depending upon when you're seeing this video, it's going to be a year or slightly less, they will give you 10% off of all of your Uber purchases, hopping in a car and going somewhere, 10% off of Uber Eats, having them deliver the food to you. And also you'll get a free, the monthly subscription fee for Uber is waived for that entire year or period up until November 14th, 2024. That's for both of the cards. Now the Quicksilver card rewards, they don't have all the different spending categories. They do have the Capital One Entertainment and the Capital One Travel, but for everything else, it's one and a half percent back on everything else. They also have, of course, the Uber. Both cards have no annual fee and a $50 sign-up bonus. I think you have to spend $100 in the first three months. So if it were me, which card would I choose? Well, you may not have an option. You may only be approved for one. But the Quicksilver card, in my opinion, is the easiest because it's giving you 1.5% cash back on all spending categories. So you don't have to think, you know, am I going out to eat? Because you may eventually have multiple credit cards. And in the various videos I have, you'll see that you might wanna use different cards for different types of purchasing because they give you a higher percentage back or more points, more rewards. But in this case, 1.5% back on all categories is really good if you're a student and you don't even have really a decent credit rating or any credit rating at that moment. If they're willing to give you 1.5% back and someone with amazing credit can get a card with 2% back, that's not a huge difference. So I think for students, this Quicksilver card with no annual fee and one and a half percent back in all categories, that's one that I would recommend you take a look at, especially with the Uber bonus, but that's only until November of 24. More importantly, you're not gonna have an annual fee and you're going to have the ability to increase your credit rating as long as you keep your utilization low, build your credit and get one and a half percent cash back on every category and everything that you spend. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.